things don't go wrong, they start wrong. I don't believe I'm the most talented. I'm just the right person for the job. It's not how much money you earn. Mm-hmm. It's how you spend your money. Mm-hmm. My mentality is I can always start again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's never the end. Yeah. yeah. The end is when you die. I can always start again. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Financially Incorrect, a podcast sponsored by FX Pesa. Please remember, if you want to learn about trading, if you want to understand anything in that space, they offer free lessons. Um, we also leave links in the description, description box for you to go and check out. You can set up demo accounts if you don't want to try out the real thing. But remember, you can, book, you can book lessons, you can come and learn and understand this whole world. Fantastic place. FX Pesa sponsors of this podcast, big on financial literacy. So today I have with me Eric Musioka, right, an award-winning producer and the chairman of the Recording Industry of Kenya, a non-profit organization that has been set up essentially to try and protect and I guess grow, invest, and an make advocate. a success, an advocate for producers and mm. anyone who owns some, guess, recordings, yes. some recording intellectual property yeah. Yeah. in Kenya. Yes. Welcome, Eric. Asante sana. Uh-huh. Yes. Uko Kabisa, kabisa. First, let me ask you, what kind of bike do you do you ride? I've seen your your, your helmet. <laughs> Looks very serious. KTM 1190 Adventure R. You know, as I've said that, I realized I know nothing about bikes. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's a big I bike. It's a big bike. <laughs> it's a big bike. It's a big bike. Yes. Yeah. Do you not? Are you not afraid? No danger. No nothing. Living is a risk. So. Yeah. <laughs> You might as well... Investing is a risk, so I've invested yeah. <laughs> in vibes. It, it, it's my detox mode. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. It helps me go decompress after I've dealt with musicians. Do you not... I mean, um, what's the highest speed you've hit on your uh-huh. bike, actually? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is going to be recorded. My kids will watch and I tell them to go slowly. <laughs> so yeah. just know it's three digits. Three digits. High three digits. <laughs> High three digits. That could be like 900. <laughs> <laughs> the probability of being that. Right. Is high. But high three digits. Yes. Okay. I what mean, did, the bike has a top speed like? of 320. So. 320. What did it feel like? To move after that, Actually, that after 220, you don't feel anything. Really? It's just... It's like you go into a bubble. <laughs> yeah. Because now the, the way the bike sounds, the way the rev, the engine, you know, mm-hmm. like it's at a constant speed. Mm-hmm. So everything is just one. The mm-hmm. gear is not shifting. Mm-hmm. The wind speed is the same. So it's, it's a very, actually it's very relaxing. Mm. Yeah. But dangerous. If you do that on the streets, yes. Yeah, Definitely right, those right, speeds right. you hit to go in the middle of nowhere. Right. Yeah. Like we've, we did... Um, Moyale to, Mar- Moyale to Marsabit is about 240 kilometers. Mm-hmm. We did that in an hour, 20 minutes. That's, that's something. On the road, we only saw two cars. Right. <laughs> Must be a lot of fun. <laughs> no, so, I wish, yeah. So the road is re- pr- practically empty. empty. Right. It's just you and the road and yeah. the desert. I wish I could do something like that. Yeah. I, I, I've had... Um, I've ridden a couple of quad bikes, mm-hmm. and every time I've been on a quad bike, I've had a, an accident. <laughs> so I am I am deathly, deathly afraid <laughs> of getting on any on 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 two wheels for sure. No, try try two wheels; they'll move the soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, tell us a little bit about um, I guess Reiki. So Reiki is an industry association mm-hmm. uh, set up to enable us to help artists. I mean, sorry, owners of some recording. Right. Uh, advocating for their welfare, mm. uh, policy with government from the political class and the executive class. Mm-hmm. So we are the mediators f- for that. Okay. And among other things, our core mandate is to certify album sales, mm-hmm. digital downloads and song plays, mm-hmm. issue um, ISRC codes, the International Standard Recording Code for any recorded works in the world. Mm-hmm. Currently, when you register your m- music to go online, mm-hmm. the distributor is a partner with the uh, IFPI, mm-hmm. the, the body that uh, we fall under. Mm-hmm. And so they give you a code, but we want to be doing that locally for our artists. Okay. So that code enables you to track your music anywhere it's used in the world. Mm-hmm. So it's very easy for you to collect royalties because you have an ID number. Mm-hmm. Your song has an ID number. Mm-hmm. 
Then we also advocate for anti-piracy. We are, we are big on that because piracy is the way we lose revenue mm -hmm. for, from, 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 for some recordings. When somebody pirates that, we are losing that. And generally educating the, our members on the music business at large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a producer or, or an owner, right, yes. of, of any music um, copyright out there, why should I be a part of Reiki? Like, why would it be important to me? What benefit do you guys? One, yeah. I have SAS three codes. Two, certification. Uh, by certification, um, certification, it's what I've explained. Right, like, when right, you're, so the, how many right. songs you have. And that re it really helps in, you know, it's good for your clout and for you to know the value that you're adding to the music ecosystem. Right. That's why you hear in the US, they are big on going platinum. It's mm -hmm. a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the Reiki of the US, which is called the RIA, mm -hmm. is the one that... That, did, that sets that standard. Sa exactly. What's, what's our level of gold, platinum? We are still in the formal, in the formal stages. I think it says like 20,000. 25,000 25, platinum. platinum. Yes. platinum. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. So we should be not far from there. Maybe yeah. around, we are aiming to put it at 15. Okay. 15,000. Yeah, because actually America is the only one that has a million. Yeah. Yeah, it's then I think Europe is 100 or 500. Yeah, it, it varies depending on the mark, size of the market. Right. Yeah. Then um, after certification, then we do the chart, mm -hmm. charts, uh, like the billboards. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. also the data we collect and enable arts, uh, artists to, uh, to know how their music is performing mm -hmm. in the public space. And then... An awards show. Right, right. Like the Grammys. What we've just seen. We've seen, yes. Right. So <clears throat> the Grammys are organized by the Reich of the US. The right, RIA. right, right. So that's also something that is in our pipeline. Mm -hmm. It's in our mandate, actually. So okay. like in South Africa, RISA does the South African Music Awards. Mm -hmm. And they give, I mean, they've, they give artists a lot of clout. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you cannot get Banner Boy for less than a million dollars. Is a Grammy award-winning artist. Simple. <clears throat> Very simple. <Right. laughs> yeah, so that's the importance of those awards. But for us, our main focus is just try to improve the business environment, mm. the music business environment in this country, to make it a profitable business mm. with the right structures and the right policies. Why, why do you think we've been unable to, I guess, figure that out um, for ourselves? I mean, technically speaking, I mean, South Africa if I'm to look at it from a purely, and I hope, hope people don't come for me for this, mm. but from a purely political standpoint, yeah. I mean, gained independence in 1994, was it? But not, not too long ago, yeah. I mean, in compared yeah. to yeah. us, right? Yeah. But they have those structures set up and okay. we've not been able to do it. Let me quote a very good friend of mine called uh, Arthur Wandera, mm -hmm. aka DJ Space. And he always says, things don't go wrong, they start wrong. Mm -hmm. And... For us, our industry has just started wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When by the time artists were identifying their rights and demanding to be compensated and trying to align themselves with international standards, there was nobody to guide that process. Mm -hmm. So everybody did what they knew. Right. And in the process, it's become a mess mm -hmm. because everybody's just trying to implement something from here, something from here. We don't have a structured system. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the in SA, RISA started the music industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. In the US, RIA started the music industry. Mm. So oh, that was backwards. Exactly. We are doing it backwards. Yeah. We are trying to fold the music industry into right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's a lot of baggage, political problems, trust issues that we have to deal with. Yeah. So if we were starting our industry. If Reich had been there 50 years ago, you would not see the problems that MCSK is having right now mm. because there'd be a structure. Mm. Actually, in the developed nations, like, for example, US or SA, RIA has formed these CMOs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's like a, as a system of how things are done. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Um, question on someone sending me something here mm. that's distracting me. But I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it <laughs> later. Um, but I guess question on, because when, when we were talking before, you were saying that um, the power is in the artist, but they don't, 
they don't know or they are not, I don't know, whether it's willing to come together. What is your whole philosophy around the artists having the power to change the system that's currently in place? I mean, who creates the product? Right. You know, it's uh, just like any other industry. The person who creates the product is taken advantage of, mm. but they have the power. For example, in the coffee industry, when the farmers say they're not going to farm, the middlemen will come begging for them. If today artists stopped creating music and they say we are shutting this industry, the people who are eating off this music, where will they eat from? You know, at the end of the day, they have the power. But also, sometimes they lack the knowledge because you're too engrossed in the creating process. You forget the business side of things. Mm. Another situation is you don't have the resources to... Even if I have this product, where am I going to sell it? Mm -hmm. So you come, somebody approaches you from a disparate point of view and they take advantage of you. But at the end of the day, the bodies that artists elect to represent them, the power belongs to those bodies. So these artists have the power to change the officials in those bodies right. and put people who can go fight for their rights properly. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Final, like, music -y question yeah. before we really get into it, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on Universal pulling its music from, from TikTok? What do you think is, is behind that initiative? I mean, it's, I've been watching interviews and reading articles about it. I mean, a very interesting perspective I saw in one of the podcasts, which I'm leaning, I'm tending to lean towards too. Mm -hmm. They're just going to come into an amicable agreement mm -hmm. because... Universal grievances are TikTok is infringing on artists' mm, rights mm -hmm. by generating content using AI, mm -hmm. which is cutting off the artists from the, mm -hmm. from the deal. Mm -hmm. But they are saying they're employing their technologies. Mm -hmm. And Universal is like, no, you can't do that because these are our artists and this is our content. Mm -hmm. So they've kind of pulled out to teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But they are losing out on marketing opportunities right, to create right. viral music, music and viral and content yeah, for their yeah. artists. Yeah. And because theirs is not really f from a money perspective. It's mm -hmm. not a financial mm -hmm. thing because mm -hmm. for them, TikTok mm -hmm. is an advertising platform. Mm -hmm. They have avenues where they make their real money. Mm -hmm. So then they're just trying to safeguard the rights of the artists, mm -hmm. the actual artists. So I honestly don't know how long the standoff is going to be, but I don't see it lasting long right. because they are losing on one end and <clears throat> TikTok can just go the indie way. Right, <laughs> you right, know, right, right. Universal represents about what? It's 30% of the catalog right. on TikTok. So there's 70% That's more still there. <laughs> So, okay. you know, it's two giants fighting. Yeah. Who is yeah. suffering? It's the artist. Right. Right. You know, in, in Kenya we have Fali Wawili Wakipigana. So it's just two mm -hmm. giants who are fighting. Right, and right. As an artist, I can really do nothing about it. Right. Yeah, just sit and watch and, and, and hope, hope for the best. Hope the for the, the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. I guess your own money yeah. journey or your money story. Yes. And my first question is, when you are starting yeah. as, a, as a producer, how many, how many producers um, did you start off with when you were in, um, when you're at Homeboys? I guess getting into the system so to speak and why are you the most talented out of the cohort that you were in okay um i have a very controversial view on talent mm -hmm. i don't believe i'm the most talented i'm just the right person for the job mm -hmm. yeah so we were many but most of them actually the, a good number of them are still in the business mm -hmm. and the ones who have left have not fallen off they've evolved into other things mm -hmm. into other aspects within the music and ent entertainment Space. ecosystem yeah right. so i mean it's it's been an interesting journey mm -hmm. um definitely a lot of way more challenges <laughs> <laughs> but right. you know overcoming them has also been bittersweet okay yeah and so when you say you're the right person for the yeah. job, yeah. what does that, um, you're not the most talented, but the right person for the job, what does that mean? I'm able to execute your vision creatively mm -hmm. well. 
Okay. Yeah. Because I can't produce steel, Dre, mm-hmm. and Dr. Dre can't produce curry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see. Right. So I'm the right producer for that song, and Dre is the right producer for that song. Right. But we are both talented in our own ways. Right. Yeah. So that's that's my perspective on things. So uh, I have an issue with this thing of best producer, best. Uh, <laughs> I have a very big issue with it. Right. Yeah. Because I've not produced all the music in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm a good producer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to it. I guess where, when, um, how, how, how did you grow up? What was your background like? Um, I guess when you're in, in your household, what are the things that you're being taught about money, if anything at all? What are you seeing? I had, um, I had the best money teacher in the world, mm-hmm. my accountant mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And it's through what she has taught me that, uh, I've actually been able to create a career for myself mm-hmm. and just uh, follow through in, in financial matters. But, I mean, definitely I've made a lot of mistakes, big mistakes, mm-hmm. like buying European cars. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Money pids. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so such things, you know, okay. and, and just um, buying things because of the hype. Right. But then she's always at the back of my head just being like, no, that's not a good thing. No, don't buy that. Buy this. No, don't do this. So it gives you time to... And I mean, before I address that, there's a a principle I believe in. Like, uh, if you want to buy something, don't buy it that day. Mm -hmm. Go home and think about it. Maybe Mm -hmm. two days later, the urge will have gone for wanting to buy that thing. And you'll discover maybe other creative ways of going around it. Right. Yeah, so... Is that something that your mom taught you? Because that's something my mom taught me for oh, sure. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, like that we'd, is... go, we'd go to the supermarket yeah. and we'd be like, oh, yeah, I want this toy. And it would yeah. be, you know, and, uh, you know, we've accumulated like some pocket money and whatever. Yeah. And she's like, okay, great. Um, but we'll come back next week. Yeah. And if you want to get it next week, <laughs> then we'll buy it then. Yeah. And then obviously you come back the next week and there's a cooler toy. Yeah. So you don't want that one anymore <laughs> and you want the next one. Yeah. And the cycle continued, you know, you don't end up getting <laughs> yeah. don't end up getting a toy. But okay. So what did you like what were you witnessing in the house? Are there specific things that she would do? Was it a very direct yeah. um teaching or was it more just by what you're witnessing? Both, mm-hmm. what I was witnessing and what I was teaching. So my mom, she 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 has, she has a very frugal life, and she has a very big policy on cash flow is king. Mm-hmm. It's always good to have cash, yeah. just to be liquid. You never know. Yeah. So she minimizes a lot on expenditure on mm-hmm. unnecessary things. So she, she she's very frugal. Mm-hmm. So she, I remember when she was buying, she was upgrading her car, which she had for like 14 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were with her. Mm-hmm. So we, we, me and my brother, so we were pushing her to buy this beautiful, beautiful X5 BMW. Mm-hmm. So she told us, fine, we'll buy it. So she cut the deal and everything. Then she said, I'll pick it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. She came back with a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> she got to the dealership and was like, came back uh, with the Honda. <laughs> we weren't there. <laughs> so, so she came back with the Honda. You're like, hey, but yesterday you cut a deal for an X5. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't need that one. Mm. I'm okay with this one. Right. So, but th- at that point, of course, we were young. We didn't understand what it was all about. But right. I mean, right now I, I know better. Right. And yeah. Okay. So s- such things, and also just, I remember because I, <laughs> I went to a group of schools, and my room was not in suit. Mm-hmm. So I went and told her, "No, my friends have a bathroom in their house. He has a TV." He told me, "Don't worry. When you're big, you'll build your own house and have your own bathroom." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Simple. Yeah, and yeah, but as long as I'm the one taking care of you, yeah. this is the bathroom you'll use with your brother and sister. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah, and this is the TV you'll watch, the three of you. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, so, di- I mean, did you feel, I don't know, I guess as... as, as Even as if you feel angry, what will you Did you feel some type of way about what your friends were, um, I guess, experiencing in the lifestyles that they were having? Of course, being of being schools. a young, impressionable child, yeah. it, it rubs you in a certain type of way, but... Utadu. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. at the end of the day... <laughs> What will you do? Yeah. yeah. Did you think, did you feel to yourself or think to yourself, you know, 
I'm going to make sure that I get mm. enough money to be able to put my kids in to, to be able to so that my mm. kid is the one with a bathroom and a TV in their room. Fortunately, I thank God that's not that thought never entered me. I mm. I never wanted to to revenge because and I've come later to realize in life that I mean that's that's coveting someone's property and right. coveting someone's success. So right. Funny thing, I never, I never had that urge. I never felt like one day I'll, be, I'll revenge, I'll have my own things. Yeah. For me, it was just like we don't have it. Fine, move on. Yeah. Next, right. <laughs> like I, I had other issues to deal with yeah. and to just to worry about some things. Okay. So, for example, I'd see, like for for lunch, for break, she would pack for me carrots, cucumbers, onions, mm -hmm. tomatoes, some mayonnaise. It's tasty. It's very nice. It's yeah. Then my friends have come with hot dogs, buns, you know. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. do I want to open this lunch right, box? Right, right. But right now I'm like, damn, you you are smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now I'm like, my kids will eat all the cucumbers in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, later you come to realize that was a healthier version of, uh, of, of version food. of food and. Yeah. Like right now, you look at sausages. I'm, do I even want a sausage? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So such habits, I mean, they reinforce something, some things in you, mm -hmm. and teach you the value of options. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need this to to, to exist. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the basics. But I mean, we had everything. Honestly, yeah. we had everything. It's just that we didn't indulge in luxury, but okay. we ate. If it's chapati, we ate like everybody else. Chips, we ate like everybody else. Sarit, we went like everybody else. We games. just didn't have a bigger TV in the house. Yeah. Because maybe my mom prioritized our education right. and savings and building a bigger nest for us to tap into when we are bigger. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when do you first sort of, if you can remember, have a conscious memory of the value of money and, and what money does for people in life? Unfortunately, it was a bit late in life. <laughs> late. Okay. Oh, yeah, very late. Yeah. Because, and actually that came about when I, when I got married. When That's, you got married? Yes. How old were you when you got married? 26. Okay, so for 26 years of your life... I was YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> I was YOLOing it. Yo, my money is my money. Okay. Uh -huh. it's, it was so bad. Right. I would eat my money. Mm -hmm. Then <laughs> I was given a car by homeboys. Mm -hmm. I would be driving it and fuel. I have no money for fuel. Fuel dies, I call my mom. She comes, brings for me fuel. That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> I had no concept of finance. Right. But my mom had that concept. So okay. she kept me in line okay. by default. Plus, then again, that's why sometimes I'm, I'm like, I wasn't a rebellious child. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. So me, if she says no, ah, whatever. Me, I move on. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I don't feel like she hates me or she's not, she's not interested. You know? ah, I'll just move on. Right. Because I remember when, when I was in a rap group and my friends, their parents would give them money to mm -hmm. go spend when we go out. Mm -hmm. First of all, my mom is asking me, why are you going out? Right. <laughs> what are you going to do out? Okay, if you're going out, see, I've given you pocket money. Mm -hmm. For campus and fair, you save that money and take yourself out with it. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, she will not give me money. Mm -hmm. So now I, I have to skip lunch <laughs> so that I make sure I have money for Saturday mm -hmm. to, to go, go out. out. She, she has not said not going out. No, no, you go out, but not on my tab. Right. Yeah. If it's my tab, stay at home. I can buy ice cream. We eat. <laughs> we, <laughs> we watch Melrose Place. That's the right. biggest show there. So what happens yeah. to you at um, at 26 that you then begin to understand the value and, and, and appreciate money? Uh, somebody's asking me for money. <laughs> no, right. wife. Right, right. I'm like, dude, okay, I need to save money because I've promised this person I'll take care of her forever. Mm -hmm. So I cannot let her down. Mm -hmm. So now money starts having value. Mm -hmm. Like uh, every coin now matters mm -hmm. because... I'm not alone anymore. And mm -hmm. I mean, I never lived alone. Mm -hmm. I, I left my mom's house the day I got married. Okay. 
I, I never lived on my own. Okay. When I went to the States, I lived with my aunties. Mm-hmm. So my mom used to send me the money. Then I would budget exactly for what is needed. Mm-hmm. She would send me what is needed. Right. I mean, I have food, I have bus fare, maybe an extra hundred dollars for miscellaneous activities, which really and truly I had none. Mm-hmm. So actually that hundred dollars, I saved all of it and bought equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I come back, I'm still living with that mentality, being taken care of. But then now I have to move out of Because you're, get, you're getting married. Yeah. Then I'm paying rent. Now, what looked like a lot of money, all of a sudden it's, hey, 15K is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when you're paying rent, yeah. it's, it's nothing. So that you start now to feel the weight and, when and when responsibility you, checks in. Yeah, sorry. When you were getting yeah. married, yeah. What, what job were you doing at the time? How, how much money were you making at the time? You're going with P-Unit. Yeah. <laughs> I was just having fun here. Yeah. <laughs> you, were st- well, you, you had left homeboys at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had... I had left homeboys like three years because I left homeboys to go to the U.S. to study. Okay. Yeah. So actually I won producer of the year. Then uh, my, my mom had been kind of opposed to my being, my doing music. Mm-hmm. So when I won that award, actually we, are, we had been at loggerheads, but mm-hmm. in parentheses, mm-hmm. not, <laughs> right. not in a bad way. Right. Like she was like, she didn't understand what I'm doing with my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when that opportunity came, she was, she was like, okay, actually, this thing is, can I help you make it better? Mm-hmm. So I told her, there's this school I've been wanting to go to. Mm-hmm. Take me to that school. So she organized, she paid for my fees. I went and she supported me my whole stay in the US mm-hmm. for two years mm-hmm. when I was there. So I could just focus on my studies. Right. But then when I was there, I got called for a job. Mm-hmm. The first job that I made my first million. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does that how does that phone call come about? Or who who, who if you can tell us who <laughs> makes that phone call? <laughs> One, my biggest mentor, mm-hmm. my crabber, mm-hmm. who has exactly the same money habit as my mom. Yeah. Now that I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are cut from the same cloth. Right. Yeah. So even him when when I was working there, he the way he handled these things, I was like, you're just like my mother. You say no to this, don't do this, don't buy this. <laughs> right, right. Because I used to be like, Mike, why can't you buy a big car? Yeah. I mean, you're driving a Datsun. Your peers are on Mercedes Benz. I'm like, Mike, uh, he's like, me, I'm okay. See, me, the car is moving. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I'm buying speakers. I'm building my empire. I'm not, these cars, you'll buy them. Yeah. Actually, Mike used to tell me, you'll buy these things. They are not going anywhere. And there will be better ones then. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my those are Mike's word. Yeah. So even the salary he was paying me, I used to be like, ah, this money is little, but I just wasn't organized. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't, I was disorganized. Mm. There are people who are living with that salary, like yeah. paying rent, sustaining their lives on the same money. But because I come from, you know, Lovington, ah, for me this is money to spend with my Chile. Yeah. <laughs> Eat burgers and steers every day. Right. Uh, buy for Angie. Uh, she used to come visit me in the studio. Yeah. Milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of investing. Right, right. <laughs> Instead of investing. Okay. And actually one concept Mike taught me was, it's not how much money you earn. Mm-hmm. It's how you spend your money. Mm-hmm. That's something I learned from Mike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so where are we? You're telling me about the first million. Yes. So you're in the States. So the, f- the email comes. Yeah. There was no phone call. Right. <laughs> so we have this job. We need you to come and help us work on it. Are you available? I'm like, hey, of course. I'll come back. So we negotiated and everything, the monies and everything. We, we finished. I didn't tell anyone I was coming. Mm-hmm. I just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> My mom found me watching TV in the house. <laughs> she almost <laughs> fainted. She's like, what the? Right. The guy who picked me up at the airport, Jack Rooster. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Jack Rooster. He's the one who picked me from there. He's the only person I who told. Who knew that you were coming back? I was coming. Right. My mom just walked. And you hadn't finished school at this point? No, I'd done actually two semesters only. I'd okay. just done two semesters. I had three more left. Okay. In the course. Yeah. Yeah. So I just showed up. So, of course, I knew if I tell mom it's money and business, yeah. she'll calm down. And then we am here. She's not going to. Now, now that you're here. <laughs> I mean, <business>. I'm 6,000 <laughs> miles back. Right. But do you book a, re- you book a return ticket? I had ticket? a return ticket. Okay. I had a right. return ticket. Right. I had sorted everything. I had a letter from the school. Which deferred. semester I'm going to join. Right. And everything. Right. I had 
organized everything before I came. Okay. In fact, I was so happy when the academic registrar told me, yeah, you can move. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So actually, I was supposed, the project was only for about two months, mm-hmm. but I mean, because of the summer break, I, I stayed an extra month because even if I went back, I was just going to bum. Okay. Because class was starting in f- uh, a month later. Yeah, a month later. All right. So I so just hung around. So you come back, yeah. make your first million. Yes. What do you do with your million? I wanted to buy a Subaru. Mm-hmm. WRX. WRX blue. The blue with the yellow rims. Blue <laughs> with golden <laughs> rims. Yeah. Yeah. Eagle eye. Was it the eagle eye? <laughs> right, right. But I don't have a bank account, so the money is going where? My, my mom's account. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't touch the money. So the money comes and she's like, why are you buying a car? Yeah. This car will do nothing. So let me invest this money for you. Yeah. And I left her with the money. Did you, like, was it, what, what, how does that mm. conversation go? Like, are you like, but this is my money? Why are you telling me um, what to do with my money? Do you not think about setting up your own bank account to be like, just transfer the money? But I'm going back to the US. So, okay. And, you know, it's, that, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's, it's purely the grace of God that mm-hmm. I wasn't a bastard child. I'm sorry. Uh, right. Like, for me, my mom's word was law. And if she it, says no, ah, me. Even if it was your own money yeah, that you yeah, had. move on. I, I, it never used to... And up to day, I still love that mentality. Me, if you tell me no, I'll not bat, I'll not bother you. Me, I'll just move on. You say you don't want something, fine. Me, I, I don't hold grudges. I, I, you tell me it's over, fine, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I leave you. I, I, I live to. I have another. You've not me as long as you've not killed me. Yeah. What you've denied me, I'll attain it later. Yeah. And I'm patient. In fact, I. That's one of the greatest gifts I have. Me, yeah. I can wait. I have no problem waiting. So she told me no, and I'm like, mm, whatever. Now let's go back eat McDonald's. <laughs> but also, I guess making music for me is therapy. Mm-hmm. I just lock myself and just invent and create music. But you want, uh, because I'm trying to, because at the, at the time you're what? 20, 22, 23. 22, 23. 22, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to imagine the mentality of a, of a 22, 23 year old who's just made a million <laughs> and is being told, you're not touching this money. Or you're not touching this money to buy a car. Yeah. And you I just mean, there go was, back. Sen- you see, yeah. subconsciously, you know she's right. This is a depreciating Do asset. You though? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, okay, she's right. This car will just sit here and rot, it will not move. Mm-hmm. It will need oil. It will need to be sorted. It will just eat my money. It will, it's not going to grow my money. Mm-hmm. So the subconscious goodness told me, she's right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> just, just leave it. I mean, she's right. Okay. I may not see it now, but right. she's right. Okay. So, so I, I, I'm my, the kind of person I am, I'm not the, I don't force issues. Mm-hmm. You tell me no. Because even me, I remember the day... Sometimes you do work and a client rejects your work. I'm not the kind of person who will be like, ah, I should have done that better. Eh, me, I, ask, I move on. I just, oh, you rejected it. What is my loss? Pack my bags, put it on the side and right. <laughs> go, go discover something else. Okay. Yeah. So you go back to the States, leave your million in your mom's uh, bank account. Taking care of it. Yeah. So she invested it wisely. Yeah. So I came back two years later and... I bought my first property. With the money now that she had, with this million yes. plus whatever. Then she also now added me more. Yeah. <laughs> because she's like, good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and by the, actually by yeah. that time, yeah. post-election violence had happened. Okay. So I was like, I need to come back home. Mm. Mm. And just, plus also now after I went back, actually now I stayed more in the US and the, the studies got intense and just... There's this loneliness of just missing home. You just want to come back. Then I guess I also grew as a person Mm -hmm. because now I started seeing there are no job opportunities here. Mm -hmm. If I actually after that, when I came back, now I went for my internship, Mm -hmm. and I happened to intern at Didi's house. Mm -hmm. Didi, this Didi. Yeah, yeah, Didi's house. The one who has been. Yeah, Didi's. They need juicy, juicy. Oh, yo, yo. That one. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh huh. 
we had uh, one of the guys one of our lecturers mm-hmm. um, had a v- actually our school was very well connected with the new york right. entertainment scene because some guys were placed at Wycliffe, others went to jay-z's place mm-hmm. then i i got placement at didi some guys went to sony mm-hmm. i mean it was <clears throat> i mean it's normal it's there it's yeah, normal. yeah 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 <clears throat> but the experience here was very frustrating because mm-hmm. actually Winter now found me as an intern. Mm. <laughs> it was the worst, mm. the worst experience ever. Then I realized you will never become an engineer in this country. First of all, I don't have social security. Mm-hmm. I'm here on a student visa. So getting work, these guys, you are not going to replace an American right. for this right. job. Right. So you'll always be a cable guy forever. Right. That was our work. Right. And we only come into the studio after the stars have left. Your work is to so bring pizza, see, so burgers. You see, you see them? Oh, you see them from far. Uh, yeah, you see them from far. <laughs> they, they are there. Hi, Snoop. Hi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They are come Bali doing their thing. Mm. So I realized, actually, I have a better chance at home because I still have my networks and connections back home. Yeah. And anyway, I have nothing to lose going back. Right. Worst comes to us, I'll just go to Shags. <laughs> That's what I told myself. But let me ask you about that because it sounds like um it sounds like your mom was relatively well off. Um and by relatively well off I mean I mean it sounds like like you said you went to a group of schools you were in a good school um based on I mean if we fast forwarded with the story but if she was able to top up on your yeah. million to help you like it sounds like yeah. No, she she's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll never be rich like her. Let me just tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I sell headphones like Dre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she so she so I mean so even as you're talking about going back home yeah. and the thing going to Shags I'm assuming yeah. that's more uh, like what comes yeah. to us me I can go to Shags. Yeah. Whatever man. Yeah. I'll start again. Right. For me, I mean, it's that it's my mentality is I can always start again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's never the end. Yeah. Yeah. The end is when you die. I can always start again. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've built this, I can build it again. Okay. That's how I approach things. Right. So I was like, I I did I I actually I had a call with one of my very good friends is called Steve Kintu. Mm-hmm. And we wrote pros and cons of staying and and st- and coming and I discussed with him and a few friends Then I I was like I'll just come back home. It's the knowledge I've gained, it's more useful here than there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know at that time when you're making these decisions, you don't see, but there's just a third, what do you call it, an intuition. There's just something yeah. at the back of your mind telling you, you just keep doing it. You never know. You never know. You never know. Mm-hmm. But all the indicators were pointing towards a prosperous entertainment scene. Yeah, right. Yeah, so because i had seen where we started and i was seeing what is happening yeah what uh, the revolution of the internet had done right to our artists to our music and artists were actually living off of music i mean we had the namelesses the noninis they were buying things with music money i'm yeah. like there's money here so let me just come and tap into this pot okay and Kikumana, I'll be a file go live in Jags and had cows and <laughs> <laughs> okay or run my mom's businesses. That was my right. last option. That yeah. was the last option. Yeah. So um, you come back to Kenya. What's the first yeah. move you make? What's the first financial move you make? Studio. I built a studio. Okay. Yeah. Sasa Swali. Yes. You've bought. You said you bought uh, yes. property with your. With the initial that one point yes. whatever from yes from the other payment yeah. so building the studio where did you get that money from I borrowed from my uncle yeah. my brother and people who had money around me yeah and some I had okay I had some money okay so I borrowed I think 200 G's mm-hmm. but I made it very clear to these people it's a grant I'm not returning it <laughs> 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 you are helping me shut up. <laughs> I showed them I've bought equipment. <laughs> I my savings were X. I've bought yeah. equipment. Yeah. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Now I need X to yeah. build the studio. Yeah. But this please don't ask me for this money. Yeah. Just give me as capital yeah. to start my business. Yeah. And I'm not, not asking a lot. Yeah. I, I didn't ask a lot of money. Yeah. I was asking for 10 Gs, 20, 50. Mm. I, I think the most I asked was 50. 
So and in total haba, haba na haba it became 200. Okay. <laughs> haba na haba 200. Okay. Then I had I think 30k on my own. Mm-hmm. So is, I had actually around 250 to start. Okay. Then I took my mom's SQ and demolished it and built a studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A very good studio uh, for the size of an SQ that it was. Yeah. Okay. Then I, my equipment was on the way because it I shipped it. I couldn't fly it. So it took like two months after I came. Mm-hmm. So it found the place ready. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then I started my I registered the, the business mm-hmm. and actually I tried going back to homeboys uh, for work. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately the spaces have been taken. The, the people are already working on in those jobs. Right. So the I couldn't fit in into the ecosystem so Mike told me to wait. So as I was waiting, mm-hmm. that's what I was doing. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't have to wait for long because business just started so as soon as the equipment comes in p unit i signed p unit right yeah okay i signed okay. p unit and took another loan from mummy <laughs> of 300k <laughs> i like how easy that so question i don't know i don't know yeah. to what to what extent yeah. um you can share of course because yeah. there's you know non disclosures among yeah. other things but what kind of agreement is this that you're getting into when you're signing p unit um No, it's not the, the agreement didn't involve money. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's start because I didn't even have the money to give them. Okay. So I partnered with P Unit. Okay. Yeah. So I became a fourth member of P Unit Limited. Okay. Yeah. So we were four equal partners. Mm-hmm. They would sing, I would make the music and market the music. Okay. That was my work as a record label. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's the 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 loan for the 300,000? to help record shoot due to sana the videos mm-hmm. you know just facilitate business moving okay yeah all right and how long the, how of course, i mean i know yeah. this but i'm just asking yeah. how long does it take for for that to take off from a business perspective because obviously there's the social elements of it you know yeah. being on, on on the newspapers at yeah. the time or whatever the case we were very lucky actually yeah the music scene was very different then mm-hmm. punit was already established Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to spend a lot on marketing. They were already a brand. Yeah. So it was just to elevate them from where they were to just a step higher. Mm-hmm. Good imaging. So the first thing I did was took photographs with Jim Chuchu. Mm-hmm. When he was a photographer. He's a very good photographer. Mm-hmm. So now we rebranded how they look. Now that fresh those beautiful yes. images of Punit now that money went into that. Mm-hmm. Got in, got better clothes. You know just a better PR campaign. Mm-hmm you know paid for medias and whatever just to bring their name at par now with the namelesses and the noninis right yeah so that actually the bulk of the money went into that and cuz that started around august mm-hmm. by december we had shows booked left right center mm-hmm. booked fully booked how much are people paying you at that time at that time we were, our first show with puny the first show after i signed them was a month later mm-hmm. september 17,000. 17,000. And the guy still cut food. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Stone. Ali Knyoa chakula. So he gave us 12 Gs <laughs> to split four people. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And question. But this, no, that's the phase that's the phase now we were rebranding. Right. So the gigs that were coming were very stupid. That was gigs. a month that was that was that like was a month September. Later. September. That yeah. was September. Yeah. By December what are you charging? Oh, by the time we go to Decem- December, yeah, yeah. we are at a hundred. By December, we are at a hundred. So after that gig of seven, yeah. 12K, we are, and we are splitting four people. Four people. So, <laughs> so in fact, that three, money three, ended three. in the venue. Because yeah. we, we <laughs> bought more food and more drinks. <laughs> we never even went wrong with it. Yeah. So we split that money, it ended there. Then we still fell for this guy. He gave us a gig in Kisi. Mm-hmm. On a Friday. Mind you, SDA land. Mm-hmm. Nobody's partying on Friday because <laughs> certain <laughs> time <laughs> to charge. Right, right, right. Hey, we, we rock up in the club. It's empty. There's There are nobody. four people. The guy ran away. So we are stranded in Kisi. We have no money. Oh, the, the promoter. He ran off. away. He ran away. We are like, guys, we should have land. This is the same guy who cut us food money. We should have just land. <laughs> we made a call to mom. <laughs> Mom, we are stranded in Kisi. Please, when you see Fresh ask him this story. Fresh went to take surprise my mom for Christmas with a gift. Yeah. This year, last year. Uh-huh. 
because of that gesture my mom sent us four Gs to come back to pay for our trans- we had nothing nobody has money we all just hustling here and there sorry i want to detail you a little bit from <laughs> yeah. the story at this point in time in your life how yeah. are you surviving no, I'm in mom's house. Me, I'm, ah, I'm at home. Okay. So me, you're, home. You're, you're easy. Yeah, me, I'm easy. I'm at home. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. That's clear. I left my I left our house the day I got, got married. married. The, the day. day. Not one month. <laughs> the day. You, had, you hadn't got to the apartment at it before. I had booked a house three weeks before. But f- for the for the day I, I never slept in that house. Yeah. Until I came back from my honeymoon. In fact, the landlord was shocked. He's like, oh, you are, I was paying rent. Yeah. That I had never set foot. We furnished that house on our way from the honeymoon. Interesting. <laughs> Stopped in Gong Road, picked yeah. two chairs, mm. went to Mr. Price, picked a mattress and bed sheets. Yeah. And then and the gifts from the wedding, some yeah. plates, spoons. Uh, and you moved. <laughs> we moved. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so So me, I'm at home. Yeah. yeah so no, I'm no bills. The, yeah, your, your, your easy. Okay. Yeah. So at um what's the jump? What causes the jump from um 17,000 to 100,000. Jutu Sana. So in November, Mm -hmm. we released a song called Jutu Sana. The video was amazing. So of course, we started getting in demand. We became in demand. So we started now getting serious people calling us. Mm -hmm. And actually the first 100K Mm -hmm. were paid by the insider, Mm -hmm. that magazine. Mm -hmm. They flew us to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. No, wait, Orange. Orange. Mm. Yes. Orange. We did a road trip to Malindi with Orange. Mm-hmm. That was our first 100 Gs. Yeah. So now corporates are now calling us. Right. Kitambo, it was promoters and funny people in basement <laughs> clubs. <laughs> right. <laughs> cutting us our right. food money. Right. Now corporates started calling us. And did you have an yeah. agreement with the boys around yeah. this 300,000 mm-hmm. that when money starts coming back... No, no, no. That was, my, that was my money. Okay. That was me. That was my money. So at no yeah. point did you want to make that 300,000 back. I wanted to, but you weren't going to take it away from the from the group. No, no, no. Okay. We are partners. You see cuz when you are shooting the videos, everybody has to contribute. Okay. I'm not the only one paying. Mm, yeah. Okay. Some things I'm paying for. Okay. But others we are equally contributing. There's a okay. video shoot you bring your 20k, my 20k like that. Okay. Okay. We are partners. Okay. So even when money came we were splitting. Okay. Four times. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. That makes sense then. Yes. All right. But you see now, I was mm. the one investing in all the music. Mm. Yeah. So pretty much their money. You see, they are not. They are not paying me to produce for them. Yes. And yes. that's why, as a record label, I own the masters. Right. Because I paid for that with my. The producer mm. time yeah. wasn't paid for from the kitty of the group. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's how it works out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so we start getting our hundred K shows. Now we start styling better. We start doing much bigger things, and now we go full throttle on production of the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it culminated into Kare, where now we are being paid almost a million on Boba show. Right. Yeah. How many? How many of those shows are there in a year? Did you? Would you have in a year where people are paying almost a million or even above a million? I would say on average six. Okay. Yeah. Four to six. Four to six shows yeah. in a year. Okay. Yeah. So for for you now, okay, yeah. now you have I guess P unit. Yes. Um, what's the next thing you do to try and generate more money from the studio? Disclaimer: mm-hmm. I don't. The way I've structured my business, I don't make money off of the studio. Okay. Yeah. Because I can't charge you enough to make money. I'll never charge anybody enough to buy the equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you pay for my services. Mm-hmm. I just happen to do those services in a recording facility. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I've structured my business. Mm-hmm. So you don't, I don't have working clients who come and 20 can if I need a truck. Mm-hmm. I, for me, that's not a sustainable business model. Okay. You, you'll never make your money back. Okay. So you invest in talent. Mm-hmm. So I, I was still investing in PUNIT and then now just exploiting other avenues of the entertainment business to mm-hmm. make money out of. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, I just want you to expound yeah. a bit more on, I guess, the business model that you've taken. Yeah. So, if you're not taking in any, to this day, you don't take in Absolutely. any walk-in, no. walk-in clients. No. So, any musician that you've worked with, yes. the agreement is project, similar to what yes. you no, did. It's a project-based mm-hmm. or a commissioned work. Okay. Yeah. Commissioned work meaning I'm paying you X amount. Yes. We agree on your produce. budget, what yeah. you can do. Then I deliver the product. What's the difference between that and a yeah. working client? 
It's a walk. It's a high end can walk in climb. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that okay. you will not walk in my space today afternoon and say, "Hey, I have 10k here to record today." Okay. I, I, I don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there has to be some sort of, I guess, conversation beforehand yes. and then understanding. I this have to know the to material. Do. I have to okay. know what you plan to record. How how best can I give you value? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how I look at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how many other P units do you have at that point, or do you start? No, just P unit. Just P unit. Yeah. Just P unit. Okay. I I focused on them at that point. Yeah. Of of course, I had, I had another artist called Monique. Mm-hmm. So we got Monique on board. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Similar arrangement, similar everything. At what point yeah. do you do you or, or at what point do you get to a point where you think I either to in order to move out I need to make more money? Does that ever come across, or are you just making enough money? to be okay. No, of course you see you can't date someone for 10 years. Right. <laughs> the kind of wife I have, you have to marry me at this point. Right. <laughs> right. And that's why I'm saying now the sense of responsibility came about. I'm like okay. guys, I have a wedding in 2 months. Mm-hmm. I need to start <laughs> spending my money mm-hmm. wisely. Mm-hmm. So that that's exactly what happened. Okay. So of course everything is set and you know now you have to move out and start a new family and right. start your own life. So now you start t- treating this as a business. So okay. I became more diligent with how I spend money. So when we get paid for gigs, a portion of it goes into savings. Mm-hmm. Then the other pa- portion now actually I used to divide my money into three. Mm-hmm. To savings and personal expenditure and to the business. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I would split the money. All right. So any any bit of money you get any money it would three always ways. go three ways. Okay. Up to today. Up to I today. still split it that way. Okay. Savings, personal expenditure and the business. Just yeah. Okay. And by business are you then buying buying equipment, better equipment, better equipment. equipment. Mm-hmm. yes. Okay. Uh, building better facilities mm-hmm. and then now also investing in new talent. Mm. Yeah. By new talent you do you mean up and up new and artists. new yes. artists. Yes. So like right now we have mm-hmm. Brian Adra, we have mm-hmm. Concordi, I have partnered with Bonai. Mm-hmm. So the money that comes now it goes into generating content for, okay. the, for that. And the principle that you work with these artists is still similar still to what you sim- do, did with them. Yeah, but now them, they don't contribute into the kitty. Okay. Yeah. P-Unit was already a brand then. Yeah. So they had some level of income. Yeah. Plus also I was starting. I yeah. couldn't support them fully. Right. Yeah. But now... Right now I can manage to... To, to, to sponsor to her yeah. okay yeah. so after 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 you get married yes. i guess and now you're i guess moving on yes. moving on in life. when do you buy your first car my first car was there was a car in the house <laughs> <laughs> okay that was to, which that i was took. being used yes <laughs> which i yes i owned <laughs> yes yes but i never transferred to my name okay. but i i owned it it was okay. it's eric's car everybody okay. needs my Okay. But it was just a family car that, that I, was I, I just right. didn't, it took and started using. Yeah. Then, so my first car, there was good money that time. Mm-hmm. So my first car was a Land Rover Defender. Mm. Yeah. Okay. When you say good money, this was source, again, this is, uh, you're making your money purely from... The unit's performance P-Unit. and my, my cut from the... From the, the performances, from the, yeah. The, the, the company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but also now I'm starting to get into TV. Okay. Uh, I've just diversified into in, to scoring for films and mm-hmm. documentaries. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much the same line, just music, just for a different purpose. Right, but right. For me, I, I don't, I only separate it for book, book purposes, but in terms of workload and scheduling, they're all, for me, it's music. Right. Whether I'm doing for Brian or for Showmax, it's music, it's okay. work, it's music. Okay. Yeah. So what are the p- different opportunities that then you begin to open up your, you know, producing skill to? Yeah. So there's music. Um, so there's that. Right. So, but mostly music for TV. Music and for just TV. Just audio production now. Okay. So I start mixing for TV. Mm-hmm. So now that's when now I get into TV work properly. Now we start with changes. Mm-hmm. I start doing uh, some sh- branding for local TV stations, like mm-hmm. the theme songs, music, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And how much would you charge someone to do? How much would you charge the TV stations or the project? It depends, and the budgets vary from as low as fifty to as high as a million. Mm. So it, it really depends. There's no, there's no really fixed. But what I look for, what I look at, is the commercial value and 
that how much time I'm going to spend on this project. Okay. But then again also, not everybody has a big budget. Mm -hmm. And actually majority don't have a big budget. Mm -hmm. Like big budget projects are one. Mm -hmm. Like could do that one or two in a year. Mm -hmm. But I mean it's big money. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but those are few. But mm -hmm. then also, so majority of them are the average budget projects. Okay. That's, I would say that's 90% of the work. And by average budget you're talking about what is 500,000, 400,000? Less. <laughs> Less. <laughs> okay. And yeah. how, how many of these opportunities are there? How many average projects are there? Do you no, see, there are many. Point, so now uh, the volume compensates for that. Right, right. Yeah. Do you ever get to a point where you feel like uh, business is low, cash or, or whatever is low? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, like the COVID period, right. I didn't have a single job for almost eight months. A single job? Nothing. How did you survive? Don't this? count recording uh, yeah, musicians. musicians. Yeah, this com like commercial, yeah, commercial work. work. Yeah, right. commissioned work and right. licensed. Nothing. In those eight months, then yeah. how, do you, how do you survive? How did you survive? Again, kujipanga uh -huh. kitambo. <laughs> so that's where now things like savings come, into hang come mm -hmm. in handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just savings. Yeah. Okay. You talked about a few uh, quote-unquote bad decisions that yeah. you've made bad financial decisions you've made. Buying European you cars. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say buying Aye. European cars? Uh, that guy sitting over there has a, has a, has a German car. <laughs> Where, and in fact, he was at the garage today. <laughs> uh, but I have nothing against them. It's just that I have a very good friend of mine called uh, Sheki. We ride together. <laughs> and he, he opened my eyes. Right. So, he's, I mean, it's... You have to understand when these cars are made, they are designed to last a certain time. Right. But in that time, they're under warranty. Mm -hmm. And the market these cars are being sold in, people are not paying cash for them. Mm -hmm. like these guys literally buy cars on credit. Mm -hmm. They use the car monthly. It's like a bill. Right. But for you, when it comes to this country, you're putting down millions to a depreciating asset mm. that's not going to gain any value. Mm. Yeah. If you're struggling, or if you're not financially, if you can't buy that car over, mm -hmm. don't buy it. Mm. Me, that's my principle. Yeah. The car I drive, I must have the same amount of money in savings. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting. Um, so right now I can't philosophy. afford European cars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> okay. The lane I'm in right now yeah. does yeah. not allow yeah. me to drive a European car. Okay. Yeah. What are the different things that you've um, invested in? I mean, Added the property, the initial yeah. property that you got. Yeah. yeah. So I, I built up there. So mm -hmm. I, I live there. Okay. That's my home. Then. Which is where your studio is as well, if yes. I'm not wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I've split them. They're, right. They're, they're, they're separate entities. Mm -hmm. Then of course. Some properties here and there, mm -hmm. um, stocks, mm -hmm. uh, money market funds, mm -hmm. and education trust for the kids. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I have a big family, so yeah. I have to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when the kids come in, what yeah. does that do for you, for your financial... You younger even and, more. And like, you younger yeah. belt more. You, yeah. you tighten the belt yeah. <laughs> even more. Yeah. So... But it, I mean, it's been a good journey. I, I can't complain at all. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I always go back to the principle of it's not how much you earn, it's how you spend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you, I mean, if you look back now, I, do you feel satisfied? I'm not sure how old you are. I know you're talking about you're closer to, closer to 50 than I'm where you I'm closer to from. 50 than where <laughs> I've come from. But do you yeah. look back and think um, you've made the most amount of money you could have made with your life so far, up to date? Or do you think there's money you've left on the table? I don't. I I personally don't look at it like that way, mm -hmm. um, because yes, I know my potential, mm -hmm. and sometimes, sometimes you wish you in a different. If I was in a different industry in a different country, mm -hmm. like <laughs> life would be very different mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, I mean, money from royalties is not that much. But mm -hmm. if I was in a market like in the US, mm -hmm. things would be different. But mm -hmm. For me, I never look at it like opportunity wasted mm -hmm. because this is what I have. This is what I know. Yeah. 
and until something else comes bet- comes which is better i don't know about it mm-hmm. the most i can do is just prepare myself for when that time comes yeah so i equip myself with the knowledge i align my priorities and my goals towards successful things so maybe there's more to come mm-hmm. i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but no 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 regrets in not that whatsoever yeah apart from buying european cars <laughs> um, but hey guys please take that with a pinch of salt yeah, eh? yeah. i still will buy a mercedes when i've retired it will be going doing 10 kilometers in a year yeah <laughs> but you'll buy one i'll just buy one when i have the right money okay yeah question because this i guess came up from mm. no a ferrari about. actually yeah tim lewis <laughs> <laughs> ah, you've <laughs> you've switched. You've switched already. No, 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 Ferrari. Um, question. Um, because we talk, we're talking about this before we started the podcast. Um, but on lending money, mm-hmm. right? Lending money. Yeah. What What are your principles on lending, lending money? When I lend somebody money, I don't expect it back. Mm-hmm. So I only lend money that I'm willing to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless it's a business deal, mm-hmm. whereby I can see this potential in the business, but somebody. Nikopeshe you give a fraction just <laughs> knowing it ain't coming back yeah, whatever the boss yeah because lending money is the easiest way to lose friends mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah because you'll expect them to pay back But by the time somebody is lending you money they are they're hard pressed mm-hmm. so it it has you you have to give money that you are willing to lose if you're not yeah. willing to lose that money just tell that guy i i, I can't yeah yeah but me nikupatia pesa na kupatia na roho safi like right. I'll never call you to tell you hey you owe me ma. I will yeah. never. Because you told me you'll return it. So it's upon you to keep a part of your bargain. Yeah. Yeah. For this year we've just started 20. But I'll remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you would call but you'll remember. I'll remember it. So when next time you come I'll be like eh but you told me. Yeah. <laughs> What happened to the other one I gave in, you? In your experience, what yeah. fraction of uh, people have given you people you've lent money have given given it back? One it back. one person. One person. One person. In your almost 50 years one, of living. One and that's why I remember because it's that one person. <laughs> wow. One person. What do you think that says about um human beings? Or is it the society that we we I, I don't in? know. I, I honestly don't look at it like that. I <laughs> You see also you have to discern when somebody is asking you for help. Mm-hmm. Is it genuine help? What I can say is that majority of the people have given money genuinely needed that money. I mean mm-hmm. it was a matter of life and death. Mm-hmm. So the few who have called me never came back and they are not I mean we are not in touch anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But they are like 0.001%. Mm. Yeah. who betrayed my trust yeah yeah i would say it, i would put it like that who i thought at that point their need for that money was genuine yeah. but it turned out to be it wasn't okay yeah because much later you realize eh, kumbe this is a habit from here to here to this now stories come back to you oh pia yali nilimpatia pia yali nifanyie hivi pia yali nifanyie hivi yeah but majority of them i would say 99% was a matter of life and death okay so just mom to to kwa hiyo shida ko nayo okay yeah okay mm-hmm. as we sort of wrap up yeah. um 2024 yes. do you have a financial target no. we've just started no do you ever have a financial target no nope. nope. unrealistic expectations why do i want pressure so you just it is what it is what comes i, I what comes see i know my how i'm dividing it even if it's 10 bob i this goes here this I don't do resolutions fine I don't do I don't do that. Do you think mm. and 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 forgive me I guess I'm going to play yeah. devil's advocate a little here. Do you think that potentially comes from I guess the the background that you have? Of course. Of course. That there's a I don't want to call it a safety net but like abundance mentality. Yes. I believe the cake is big for everyone. Yeah. So that's what pushes you the yeah, abundance yeah. mentality there's, there's, not there is cake for everyone yeah. you just maybe sometimes need to look a bit harder yeah but is it doesn't have to be money always mm. it could be opportunities mm-hmm. it could be other blessings mm-hmm. sometimes you know th- there are some jobs for example mm-hmm. 
there are some jobs you get you can't explain why you and that's why I'm telling you I don't believe in that thing of I'm the best. Mm. There are some jobs you get and you're like why did I get this job? You know, you know like they could have called somebody else but this job landed on me. Mm. You know, it's I mean I'm big on the spiritual world of things mm-hmm. and the world conspires to help you Paul mm-hmm. Coelho alchemist mm-hmm. <laughs> that book also changed actually two books that changed my life mm-hmm. the alchemist and 48 laws of power mm-hmm. and the millionaire next door mm-hmm. that actually three books so for me I have I believe in abundance you, I don't have to be greedy about anything but what happens in the spaces yeah. where you, there's lacking You know what happens in the spaces where like just genuinely there's there's little like how how do you cope you just adopt you adopt you you know you know for, for, i mean like a very, a very good example you know mm-hmm. like when you look at people who live in low income places mm-hmm. they wake up every day and are hopeful that they'll come back home mm-hmm. yet you sit you have a meeting in java two of your friends you blow someone's salary mm-hmm. <laughs> that person is a human being like you yeah. you know they is breathe the same air do everything different circumstances but i sometimes put myself in the shoes like if was ever come if was ever comes to us, comes to us how will i handle it and i put myself in these people's shoes Yeah because I know f- for me my worst will never be his will never be as bad as his mm. but if he can survive on that little so can I mm. yeah that's how I look at it yeah if he's able to make a living out of that yeah and I know my potential is nowhere even near below that yeah so there's hope even for me <laughs> you know sometimes I, I I used to tell my wife like If was comes to us me I'll be a watchman or an executive PA. Mm. Yeah, I'll just readjust my life. Yeah. I'll just shuffle a few things here and there and did you, and of course you now you see when 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 you build wealth mm-hmm. you realize that you can't fall below some certain place when mm-hmm. you have wealth mm-hmm. not cash. Mm-hmm. You know you could be rich and money comes and goes but mm-hmm. when you have wealth you are guaranteed that this is my minimum mm-hmm. and every time you make an investment your minimum just and what, g- grows. give me your definition of wealth mm-hmm. that allows for you to be like yeah you know i'm at, you know it's not going to go below the standard like you see i have a home already right so yeah. you you will never not have a home yes right yeah then even if that home burns down I have another land I go build another house. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll not be starting from looking for land. Right. I already have I right. bought that I have that. Right. I have some savings here. I can take a few and build another house. Mm. You know, like you are able to cushion yourself from disaster. That's being wealthy. Mm. Like, yeah. Okay. That's a really yeah. really interesting take. Yeah. Did you have to convince your wife about this mentality that you have or was she like how did she buy into in, into it she bought into it because she married me <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a package <laughs> but was it a, was it a dis- was it a simple discussion was it an easy discussion i mean definitely i mean and yeah. i mean before we married like those are things you discuss yeah. and money was top of the list right. like that's the first thing we made sure we the first thing she told me first she had a very good job Yeah. She told me just know that I'll be a st- I'll quit my work to take care of this home. Mm-hmm. So you do whatever you do. If you know you can't do that, yeah. Don't waste my time. Let me look for another nigger. <laughs> <laughs> Before we entangle too But much <laughs> that I can't now leave you yeah, yeah. <laughs> after you screwed me yeah, and yeah. I already told you. So she told you that. Oh, yeah, But yeah, did yeah. she tell you the lifestyle that she wants? Or Two d- years before. Or did she say the lifestyle can be whatever? Of course she she I mean we discussed that. Yeah, yeah. you can't go below this. Like minimum is like yeah. Yeah, 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 the minimums, right. but the minimums were attainable. <laughs> <laughs> The bare mini her bare minimums oh, are very attainable. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the some of the things we discuss. Okay. And that's what I'm saying you have to look at building wealth so that yeah. every time your your minimum is upping and upping and upping yeah. and upping. Yeah. Okay. Like right now all my kids have properties. Like everyone I've bought for them. 
How many kids do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Many. <laughs> <laughs> and I say everyone knows. Like, no, I have I, a, a, a cabinet of title deeds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, I guess to give them what you what you what what you had. Yeah, just just to give them a st- platform to start. Yeah. Like where you uki ukifika of age, you are, at least you can start here. I mean, but Musyoka, that sounds yeah. like you've made quite a bit of money. I mean, it's relative, be, you know. No, I well, I'm saying relative to yeah. having. I've seen a gesture there yeah. of five, yeah. having a minimum, mm-hmm. um, five title deeds, mm-hmm. um, including where you're living, mm-hmm. right? Um, in a one income household, so yeah. to speak, yeah. um, attaining the bare minimum standards. I mean, Again, it's how you spend, yeah. not what you earn. Yeah, it's how you spend. Yeah, I'll give you a very good example, and. That's why sometimes you can learn from anyone. Mm-hmm. And I <coughs> I bought a generator for the mm-hmm. for the business. You know, mm-hmm. so when power goes, I don't have to worry. I don't have to tell clients in a steamer leo to record. Right. The guy who was fixing that generator, where where I went to pick it was in Kasarani. Mm-hmm. A four-story building, the basement had generators. Mm-hmm. So I asked him, hey. Istoyako una rent how much? He told me no, it's not a rental space. Mm-hmm. I own the building. Mm-hmm. If you look at that guy, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like mtu akuchoma mahindi. Mm-hmm. But you can draw him. Mm-hmm. But he tells you I own I own the building. Mm-hmm. These are all my tenants living up here. Right. He me lives in a house he's paying 5 Gs in somewhere in Eastlands. Right. And driving an old car. But you see that guy What comes to us, he has a safety net. Yeah. He doesn't have to show anyone that he has money. Right. Yeah. So I learned from such people that, and I wasn't paying even this guy a lot of money. Yeah. Servicing a generator is worth 3G, 4G. Yeah. And that guy will drive and come service that generator. He doesn't look at how I can service. He services for Safaricom. He does all these big companies' generators. Right. right. But even my 3Gs means a lot. Yeah. And that's the same way I look at business. Me, I never say not to work. Yeah. But I have to evaluate what that work will take me to do. Mm. Also, if maybe I'm too occupied to do this work and maybe it's of, you know, small money, mm-hmm. I would rather give that work to somebody else mm-hmm. than let that client go. Mm-hmm. Or I take the job and I assign that job to somebody else. Mm-hmm. But I never tell a client no. Mm-hmm. Unless... You are a ridiculous client. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Who is going to disturb me, you know, because right. I also love my peace. Right, yeah. right. And me, for me, my main aim is just to keep raising that minimum mm. to the point that I will not have to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My final, my final um, question or statement, I was around, I guess, <clears throat> what I was trying to say, which yeah. was, I mean, You you clearly I mean through your career how, how many yeah. years have you have you been at it now 20, 27 27 yeah. I mean you've made you made a decent amount of 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 money I'd say from my perspective yeah. I, from what I've, I've what I've understood do you think you've made more than the average um producer in this country I know there are people who are making bank yeah really good bank yeah they are just silent They're just silent. Very silent. Very yeah. silent. Yeah. I won't mention them, but I know yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, very silent. Very silent. Okay. Yeah. What do you think it is that has allowed, whether it's them or you, to, to, yeah, to make that? Smart that business money. decisions. Yeah. Nothing else. And just good opportunities and patience. Mm-hmm. Just being patient. You know. Wealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Uh, there's a there's a an a podcast uh, thing there's a small group of friends we mm-hmm. we we share information and you don't have to show anybody what you have you know just be content in yourself and what you have you know mm. let it make you happy don't do it to make others happy yeah yeah and so it's just the principle we live we live by and we are just, we are just happy you know if if the three of us or four of us are happy my kids have eaten 
I've paid them at DSTV. I've taken them for a small holiday here. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ambitions. Uh, you say you have no goal. You have no written down resolution. Ah, no. goes for 2024. Me, it says it comes <laughs> as it goes. It comes as it yeah. goes. What you just have is a, a foot, uh, a mental map of where you want to go. Yeah. Because now over the years, I've known what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So. I can smell bullshit from a mile away. Yeah, like, ah, this deal is rubbish. Yeah. Just leave it. Yeah. I know how bullshit looks and works. Yeah. <laughs> when I see it. Okay. <laughs> from experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know how good opportunities look like. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something I can say from experience. Okay. Yeah. What do you hope mm-hmm. to retire into? Or do you think you'll ever retire actually? Of course I have to. I mean I can't make music forever. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say cliche farming. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I mean it's honestly I live a day at a time and I'll wait for that time to come. Mm-hmm. But I love traveling. Mm-hmm. I mean I I travel a lot. I I ride. I mean for me it's if I ever stop making music, perhaps I'll just go live a quiet life in sharks eventually yeah yeah so you leave the house you've built and then you go to sharks i'm already living there oh yeah <laughs> you know, i told my friend i have two homes they're like you have two wives yeah <laughs> i told him no <laughs> i have an ancestral home and, I have and, a, and, uh, and where and, uh, where you live yeah okay. but i see myself definitely heading there very soon yeah yeah okay yeah because i i'm always there like I go there a lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm always there. So it's so it's I mean it's a small farm and yeah, not yet commercially viable but yeah. I don't intend to do it like a commercial venture. Mm-hmm. Really. Yeah, I mean it's just something to keep you busy on your old. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, to invest into that to become a commercial facility you'd need a lot of money. Yeah. Which okay. at the moment I don't think I'm willing to sort that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe after the kids are done with the university they can bring in their money I help them. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Really really interesting conversation. I I did, I definitely did not think that it would go how it has gone. But uh, that was Musioka and um really enjoyed this conversation. Learned a thing Thank or two. You. This is the second person who's come on this year who's talked about the abundance um mentality more of you yeah. talked about the abundance mentality yeah. so maybe it's something i'm going to, yeah. <laughs> to adopt moving forward <laughs> seems to be working for some people yeah but that was that um thanks so much for coming okay. and we will see you guys on the next episode